Hi, I'm Ted. In today's video, I'm going to give you a tour of our bus and uh, also talk a little bit about uh, kind of things that I do a little bit differently. It's like, oh, I should have done this, I should have done that. So hopefully um, it's useful for you as you're doing your build to kind of see what to think about. So we'll kind of work our way around the outside of the bus. Um, first of all, I guess we got the, the paint and I chose a cream color just because I wanted a light color in order to keep it, try to cool in the, uh, in the summertime. And uh, eventually, like I said, I got a friend who's a pretty good artist, so she's going to come and she's going to do some more exciting graphics in there. We're going to wait for the weather to get just a little bit warmer. And, uh, one thing about these chair rails is that uh, there's a little bead of silicon on the top of them and that uh, they took off to paint it and you can see where the water will kind of run down here and through so i gotta wash this all off and i'll probably put a little tiny um, bead of silicon on top of these chair rails just to keep the water from dripping down in that so uh, the other thing is uh, the diesel heater i'll show you inside so um, the exhaust is right here and i'll say i'll get you shot up underneath and then the fuel tank over here and i really should have made this bigger so I can get my hand in there better. And uh, one of those things of putting a little door on there I haven't quite gotten to yet. Um, but I will sometime in the near future. So here's my shore power. I got a 30 amp service in there and a 10 gauge extension cord. I keep everything plugged in. And the water inlet. This can go from, I don't know if it's called shore power water, but city water, I guess, if you want to plug it in there and then fill. From there, here I've got the sort of a uh, vent for the composting toilet. I um, still need to sort of go back in and tidy this up around the edges, but haven't got to that yet. And I thought it might be a good idea to have a outside outlet GFI. Can't figure out how to open it. <laughs> here we go. Ah, in case you're outside and we need power, we've got it. Here's my propane setup. Got two tanks on the rack that I welded up, and uh, <laughs> I use a, a ratchet strap just to be safe because I don't trust my welding, but it's held up so far. And then I just ran copper to all my appliances. Here's a separate gray water tank for the urine diverter, and I just bolted it into the flanges in the bottom of the floor. Underneath the shower, Drains down through a Hepvo valve and then into a T there and into my blue barrel gray water tank. I got super, super struts and bolted into the flanges. And I built this little cradle to hold it in place. And then from the top, sink just dropped straight down from above. Up on the roof I got three coats of Henry's Tropicool which I thought was better than putting on the pure silicone so that seems to have held up pretty well. It's been up there for I don't know six months or so. It still looks fairly clean. Okay got our entry door here. Uh, the other bifold door was air powered and it wouldn't close super tight um, so that's certainly not good if it's cold and uh, also in the summertime the bugs were getting in so I had to do something a little bit different. Uh, again I had a bunch of this oak if you follow the build uh, around that uh, I could use and a buddy of mine gave me these RV windows so custom made door um, with a latch so we can lock it and uh, do have an outside light just in case. Okay, got an entryway here that I did out of oak and slate and river rock stone, I guess. So uh, my friend JP gave me this uh, main slate to use for the stairs, or well, she, I don't know if she gave it for the stairs. She said, here, I got some extra of slate, and I thought that would look cool in the stairs. So put that in, in some river rock on the side walls, and some oak, um, and this was just pallet wood that I used for the risers and some three-quarter inch oak for the stairs treads so it's actually held up pretty well except for this bottom 
Um, it was because I, it was too cold when I did it. It was in November and I tried putting a heater in there, but it was just too cold in this bottom step. So, um, it's a little loose. So I'm probably going to pull up a couple of these slates and just redo it. Um, everything up top is held up really well. Um, but down here at the bottom, probably have to sort of anchor that down a little bit more. Um, we can see, I don't know if you can, you see up in here, I did a sort of a built-in shelf. I just got my, uh, Got some NRR straps in there for holding boats down and things. I got those straps, and I'm not exactly sure what we'll put in there yet, but um, got some live edge oak, so I was happy the way it looked. So, pretty happy with the way the console turned out here. Um, I got a isolator switch here so that I can switch the radio on to either the the battery, you know, that drives, that starts the engine, or the house battery, so that, because um, I'm deathly afraid that I will, not deathly, that's a little extreme, but I, I am afraid, knowing me, I would leave the radio on all the time, and I would kill the batteries and not be able to start the bus, so this way I can at least hook it back to the, um, to the house batteries if I want, um, I mean, this used to be the switch for the, uh, for the door, but when I switched the door, I didn't pull that switch out, so, uh, USB charger here, um, which is handy to charge your phone when you're driving. Cup holder so I can drink coffee and stuff when I'm driving. Um, I got the two fans that still work and then of course the backup camera that I also um, I tied into a switch here so rather than just put it in reverse I can hit the switch and have the backup camera come on whenever I want. And then the tunes! Uh, but I, uh, I can't play the tunes or YouTube will shut me down so trust me it works. <laughs> So the dashboard, uh, if you saw that video, uh, again, lucky kind of with materials. This was an old uh, stair stringer in a barn that got remodeled, and so I managed to salvage some of the wood out of that. And I just love the, had the old square nails in it, so I've got sort of that texture of that sort of iron from the nails in that. I was able to cut and then sort of slope down the edges. And then in order to get the defrost to work, um, I just took a piece of one inch copper and I drilled holes in the backside and ran it up through this little, I don't know if you can see it over here. And then, uh, so the air can come out of there. Um, it doesn't blow super strong against this. Like I think if I was gonna do a lot of winter driving, uh, I probably should have run uh, one from both sides. Um, but it does work if we've driven in a couple rainy, kind of foggy days and uh, it does keep the, the windshield um, clear, so that's useful. So the bulkhead up here, uh, again music's kind of an important thing, so i uh, got the speakers in there, some Kenwoods, um, and then uh, the live edge with the library put up here, I don't know, the dog, the dog came home the other day with this uh, antler shed, so I figured out, oh, that's a good spot for it, so it'll live there for now, maybe I'll make something out of it. Uh, and then, of course, i got to hang this yet. I haven't quite done this, but uh, this beautiful carving that my brother-in-law did uh, of our boss and rafting, kind of all together there. So it kind of really kind of ties all our themes together. We're, we're super lucky to have the artistic talents of my brother-in-law, Mark. Again, I'll put his uh, contact information in the links in case you want some custom carving for you. So here we are, I don't, I don't really know what to call this other than the breakfast nook, I guess. And uh, if it's just me or Julie and I, a lot of times we'll eat here. And so this table actually, uh, it was going to be a temporary table and maybe I'll just keep it, I don't know, but it was actually the, it was a cutout for the sink. Um, so that I had, I'm like, well, I might as well use this for something. So um, it's the table. It, uh... So this area also drops down, I'll show you in a little bit, uh, drops down to make a bed. And so this kind of pops off like that. I actually put some, I don't know if you can see the holes under here, and I put some dowels uh, so that it can pop off, but keeps it from falling down. And then this, <laughs> used birch here in my legs because, well, it was free. It cost me like, I don't know, what, 15 seconds worth of chainsaw gas. But this unscrews and the whole thing drops down and creates... Uh, sort of the foot of the bed and then you can see so sort of the, the curtains here Julie made these and they slide across and again kind of the same thing I just use these pieces of birch for the uh, curtain rods because it was free 
I do kind of like the look. It kind of adds to that sort of live edge woodsiness of our theme. That drops in like that. Storage under here. These pop up. This is where we keep the other curtain uh, for the bed. So under here is a, is a diesel heater. It's a five kilowatt diesel heater. And uh, I did uh, wire up a switch to this. Um, just because the, you know, when we're not using it, the display stays on. And I figured that would be sort of a, a drain on the battery. Uh, and I think that over time, the, the, oh, I've heard that the display models fade. So I just wired up a switch so that I can shut it off manually. And I will say it worked pretty well. You know, here we are in the northeast in Maine. It was a couple times in single digits. And if I crank this up, um, within a couple hours, I could have the bus up to 60 degrees. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about insulation later. We, we are insulated, but um, most, you know, a lot of the windows are still original. So uh, I am happy with that choice. And so our, our couch slash bed. Um, again, a couple features. Uh, I do have a USB uh, charger there. Uh, I'm not... It's got the blue light looks cool, but I always wonder, you know, how much. Uh, probably does not that much draw, but there's sort of a little bit of draw. Fun power there, and uh, again, sort of a live edge armrest here. Got the cup holder. Uh, I love the live edge, and then this one's going to kind of a live edge too. Um, I have an outlet here as well as another USB charger, and uh, like I said, this pulls all out into a bed. I keep all the bed fixings under there. And uh, I'll say I'll show you that in a little bit. So here we are in the kitchen. Uh, so this was a butcher block that I did. Um, again, a lot of that free oak that I got. I uh, did an epoxy top. I'm really, it, it, it looks really cool. I'm happy with, uh, I'm happy with the butcher block. I'm not sure if I would do the epoxy again because it scratches up pretty easy. Um, so I don't know. I, 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 it, it was awesome when it was first new. Uh, and I, I tried to buff them out and it sort of gave it sort of a dull finish. So I may have to do some more research on the epoxy finish. Um, although I do kind of really like the way it looks. Uh, propane stove. Again, this is what I got. I salvaged a camper for, for free and managed to use, use the stove. So I, I got the stove and then my cutting block. This is actually the counter cut out, cut out for the stove. So I repurposed that into a, a, a cutting block. And this sink that you could probably swim laps in. And when we first got it, I was like, no, you got to be kidding me. That thing's way too big. Take up much more room. Um, but uh, it actually turned out to really like it. Um, when we first sort of t did our first test run of the bus, well before it was finished last year, um, I took the stove, the sink out of the RV and kind of put that in there as about like a postage stamp. You could hardly do anything in it. So um, I'm actually finding too that's super quick. Like if you want to travel, just toss some stuff in the sink to keep it from flying. I take the these off. I don't even, what are these things called? I don't even know what these are called. The burner, burner. Burn or something or other, I don't know, but I don't want those to go flying, so I just toss them in the sink, and it actually works out pretty well. Uh, love this um, faucet, uh, single handle, you know, works great. Uh, you know, of course, everybody's talking, well, you can stick it out the window for an outdoor shower, and I'm not that into outdoor showers. I don't know why. Why have an outdoor shower when you can have an indoor shower? But, I don't, <laughs> but we can if we want. And then the spice rack, um, built that into the wall, uh, and again, using the birch trim. A lot of it because it just cause bends. It bends super easy. So, um, interesting thing I find about, uh, and I'll give you a close-up of this, but in order to maximize sort of storage here, I built a drawer that's sort of separate because, you know, you, this space gets kind of dead unless you have, like, the, the flip-out things because of the sink. You know, you can put sponges in there, but give myself a little more room. I just built two sort of drawers that slide on either side of the sink. Um, we just keep sponges and toothbrushes and things like that. And then obviously the cabinet doors under the sink. And then I really like, you can have this actually in my real house too, but I love sort of, um, 
trash and recycling here so that as you chop, 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 you can just sort of dump all the trash right into the, right into there. And then, you know, silverware, I probably still got to build a little sort of silverware, a little rack for this that I haven't done yet, um, for this drawer. And then, uh, I think down here too, uh, right now I've just got the empty space underneath the stove, but I think I'll put a shelf in because it's, it's a big space and what happens is you just toss stuff on top of it and in order to get the stuff at the bottom, you're going to pull out of the stuff on top. So I get to do a little bit better job, I think, um, using that space down there. And I would be remiss, we got our, our shelf up in here. Um, so we're going to do, and this is obviously when we're, when we're parked because uh, stuff would go flying. Um, and just put, put a piece of cedar, but I'm going to zoom in on the post here. And again, that my brother-in-law carved. It's just, it's just an awesome touch um, to sort of give some, some personality and some spirit to our kitchen. And just in case anybody's curious, these little blocks here, um, I try to be really good about running all my wire inside of conduits. Uh, and then the conduit sort of stuck out here before it goes up to this light. And so um, I didn't want to bump out the entire shelf all the way out. So I just took this block of wood and I cut a you know, hole inside one side and I put that over there to block the conduit. Plus it's art. Is it artistic? Does it qualify as artistic? I don't know. But it covers up the holes. So over here we got the pantry, uh, and originally, uh, you know, I was gonna just storage all those drawers. That's where like the you know, we keep the trash bags and the saran wrap and aluminum foil and things like that, and then I don't know more miscellaneous bags and things like that. Then we get down here, we get into playing cards and the cribbage board and things like that. All my all my guiding licenses. Make sure I have room for that. This was originally going to be. Uh, a propane furnace that I had salvaged from that camper and then la last weekend in September last year we were um, paddling uh, up north and it, it got chilly and so you know we're in here and I said well we'll turn on the the propane stove we didn't have heat in it yet turn the propane stove and it was warm from like chest up and realized that maybe putting the furnace up high really wasn't a good plan so um, plus when I sort of did the math and realized that that furnace was over 50 years old I thought Maybe a newer diesel heater would be better, and we put that on the floor. So this ended up, instead of being that, turned out to be, you know, just pots and pans, put the cabinet in there, uh, cabinet, and then, uh, it's kind of a messy right now, but um, put the, the margarita supplies and just sort of miscellaneous drinks and stuff go up here, uh, obviously when we're not driving so they don't turn into missiles. And then uh, the refrigerator. Uh, again, it's a propane uh, electric combination. Again, pulled it out of the camper for free. Um, this is 50 years old too, but boy, it still works great. You have to actually turn it down a little bit or everything freezes. So works awesome. And then continue to be uh, our drawers down below for, I don't know, miscellaneous kitchen stuff. Up here we got the skylights that I built out of cedar. And they're super handy. Um, but what I really need is some sort of kickstand. It's kind of dusty too, uh, because I can't flip them all the way open uh, without breaking them really. So I need to find some way of opening them up and propping them open. I get the emergency exit here, and then back into the bathroom. You know, here's where uh, design kind of fell apart a little bit. So uh, I was originally going to try to put some barn doors here that would uh, some bypass that would slide each other. Um, you know, to sort of sort of the shower curtain and as the as to the composting toilet. Um, but when I came with the hardware, uh, it took up you know to slide the two doors by each other, would take it up nine inches, and that seems like all right. Well, it's four inches into the shower, which is kind of small anyway, and four inches to the hall, which is kind of small anyway. And so, end up going with a, a moose curtain instead. So here's our, here's the bathroom. And I would say, again, if I got into uh, my design errors, I would say I needed to give myself more room for the composting toilet because it's enough room for the toilet itself, but if you get your vinegar and water for the urine diverter and your compost materials, this is just not a really good spot to put it. I, I should have made it bigger so that I could have, you know, dropped it inside there. So, um, 
Kind of late now. <laughs> it is what it is. And it, it, the other challenge, too, is trying to deal with the wheel wells. And so I felt kind of locked into this space. Um, and again, I'm, I'm spatially challenged anyway. So it was it's sort of tricky to, 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 to figure out. So the thing with this, it was hard to get it to... On hinges, just kind of, it was tight, so it doesn't really sit on hinges anymore. It just kind of pops out to access it, although it's not overly complicated. That goes up. And the little urine door just pops right up and out. So... I uh, got the bucket there, and I'm using peat moss and uh, coconut coir as the I don't know the composting stuff. I do have a computer fan down there out to the vent, controlled by a switch here to turn it on. And I plumb the urine diverter. Uh, it really just sort of drops down into some pipes there and goes through. Out there because I couldn't go directly straight down because it would have run into the wheel well so I needed to run it sort of transverse wise over to here crash <laughs> here's the utility closet with the camp Lux hot water heater and I'll I'll talk about that in a second um, but the urine goes down through a hepvo valve there and then down and drops into a, uh, a tank underneath the bus, so a gray water tank. And the tile shower. Not much more to say about that other than, well, it's a shower. It's a tight fit, but it works. I'm glad I'm not 6'4". I think that's the first time I've ever said that. And I put this, uh, I'm not sure how well <laughs> this really masks. So you can see kind of right outside there. So... This may not give us as much privacy as we need. Not that I'm overly modest, but I don't want to offend anybody. That may need some work. All right, moving back to the rear of the bus, we got our utility closet, as kind of already saw. And here is our Camp Lux 10L water heater that I've had to wrestle with a little bit. At first, I was getting a lot of error messages, and I finally kind of figured out really kind of where it works best is if I have this on max so I get some you know I like to have the hot water but then I have to sort of dial this back to just a little bit more than halfway if I try to crank it all the way up it gets an error message because I think that it's uh it's too hot I'm not getting the water flow I guess I don't know um but uh I think that's I finally got it works so it works in the shower and in the sink so it seems to be all right um but the plumbing comes up into there and drain valves and blow off valve and i still got to do more in this closet i think um, maybe some shelves at the top and a curtain rod just to sort of flush out that space a little bit i have found that again put these bifold doors and this little clasp keeps that from swinging open when we're driving and kind of opposite, we have another closet, again, bifold door. And this is the kind of utility closet. It's already messy. Um, but here's our WSCO power center, which I actually really like. Um, check out the video on that on the install, but it keeps things charged. It gives me, I got breakers for my 120 circuits, and I've got breakers over here for the 12 volt circuits. And uh, it, did, it works really well. Um, for the most part, I tried to run everything in conduit, and I did use stranded wire. Uh, I just figured it makes sense of the moving vehicle, um, and I think maybe it cost me $120 total extra, which seems well worth it rather than having uh, Romex brake and things like that. Um, so, works pretty well, and then we're keeping the extra, this is where the composting toilet stuff lives for now, and there's my batteries under there. Uh, eventually, hopefully have some more batteries right now, I'm just only powered up on that one. But for the most part, I'm able to park in places where I can access shore power. So it works out all right. And over here, sort of got the bureau area. Yeah, it's, uh, it's nice having sort of this space here just uh, when you're going to bed and just need to empty your pockets and have stuff to, place to th throw stuff. 
And then these are all live edge sort of cedar that again I get from that pile of lumber for free for all the drawers. And one thing I haven't showed you yet, but <clears throat> these little hooks are not outstanding, but they're they're decent and they pop up like this. And then when you close them, they lock so that you can drive without stuff flying everywhere. And then, whoops, I gotta go get my magnet, hold on. I have two of these magnets, but one of them inside, but to get these little white magnets, and see if I can do this holding the camera. Just push that against that, and you can see it sort of lifts that latch a little bit, and then you can lock them down if you want, or they can pop up. That's how you open them. So, super, pretty good. I will say, like over here, Here, I had to put this little, because the cans are heavy, and cans would come flying and break the little latch there. And so I had to put this little thing in there like that to keep cans from flying and breaking my hook here. Another skylight here, it's nice kind of looking at the stars at night. And sort of the master bedroom, we got more curtains. Julie's putting more of those little rings in them so that they hang a little bit better. Um, where's my light switch? So lights in the bathroom here. Got a couple outlets there. Got the cabinets up there for space and then f sort of foot locker storage there down below that we put uh, tents and sleeping bags and bedding and kind of whatnot. And then more little bookshelves in here. Put the headlamps and stuff like that. And finally back here, the garage, which uh, it's not really done. I, right now, I just kind of chuck stuff back here. I need to put some hooks up there from my kayak. As of now, we just kind of chuck stuff in there and kind of the same thing, you're like burying stuff and have to dig it out. So, but I definitely wanted a spot. I do have lights up above and a power outlet. And I still got to sort of put in these finally back walls over here that I'll get to that some other time so guys that is it that is the tour of the bus so uh thank you for following along the journey uh it's not done uh, we'll be posting updates and uh, i definitely think i'm going to go back and, and and do more research on different things and continue to uh, put out videos and then keep you posted on where we're going but um Really appreciate all the comments and the support. And uh, again, it's been quite an, uh, quite an epic journey to get everything done. And uh, I am grateful for the community for suggestions and watching what other people have done. And so I'm happy to give back any way I can. You know, ask me questions uh, and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. Uh, again, it's been a pretty cool process. So um, thanks for following along and joining. Continue to like, subscribe, do all those things that you do. And uh, I look forward to meeting a lot of you out on the road someday. Thanks for watching.